Okay, guys, let's go over a review of quadratic formula and the discriminant that we've been talking about this last week. So I'm going to use quadratic formula to solve the equation that I have here, which is 2x squared plus 6x minus 25 equals 0. That means a is 2, b is 6, and c is negative 25. So I'm going to start out with that blank version of quadratic formula that we've been using in class. So basically took the a's, b's, and c's out of it and put parentheses so that it'll be ready to be able to plug in our values. So if I look at this, a is 2, so I'm going to get 2's here. c is negative 25. B is 6, but remember this one out here is going to be negative B, so opposite of that. So it's going to be negative 6. Now if I want to go through and start to get this simplified, I know it's going to be negative 6 in the front, and I'm going to have to mess with what's underneath here and get one number to put here in a minute. But I know on the bottom that these two together, 2 times 2, is going to give me 4. Now I want to focus on this part that's underneath here. So if I were to do 6 squared minus 4 times 2 times negative 25, I would end up with 136. Okay, now 136 is not a perfect square. So if I were to put this part of my calculator, I get a decimal. So to help ourselves out, this is where we're going to take them and split them. So 1 time through, I'm going to add. And 1 time through, I'm going to subtract. Okay, now, if I'm going to get this set up, I know that I want to be able to plug that stuff in my calculator. And honestly, I would probably just go ahead and use my fraction function for that just to make it easier. So if I put this whole first one into my calculator, I'm going to end up with a whole bunch of decimals but 1.42 is what I could round it to. Okay, let's see if I can get this underneath here without making it crazy. Okay, so I can see right there I put mine in there, use the fraction function, and I got this 1.415 and kept going. And remember, we always round to the second decimal place. So if the number that comes after it is 5 or bigger, I'm going to round that up. That why, that's why that one's going to be 1.42, just like I have here. So on my answers, I know x equals 1.42 is one of them. Now to get my other one, I'm going to have to put that in my calculator. Now let's go back to the picture again. If I look at this, the only thing that would be different is if I could make that a minus, it would be so much better. So I'm going to do control escape. So I'm at the end here. And I'm just going to work my way backwards to where that plus is. I'm going to delete it and put a minus. Now if I look at this, I'm going to round to here. The number that comes after it is 5 or bigger, so that's going to be negative 4.42. So this is going to be negative 4.42. Those are your two answers. Okay, let's try one more. In this one, I want to show you what it looks like when you have stuff that's imaginary. So here is my problem that I have. x squared plus 2x plus 11. 
So because I assume there's a one there, A is one, B is two, and C is 11. So I'm gonna go through and set up my parentheses stuff just like I did before. Okay, now A's are ones, C's are 11, B is two, so there's gonna be a two here and a negative two there. So if I go to simplify, it's gonna be easy to see it's negative two, plus or minus the square root. On the bottom, if I do two times one, that's gonna give me two. And now I'm gonna put this part into my calculator. Not the square root, just the part that's underneath it. So if I have two squared minus four times one times 11, I get negative 40. Oops. Now here's the only thing. I know because this is a negative square root, I'm gonna have to deal with that. So I know I'm going to have to take this, let's do this, and I'm going to have to factor it. So the first thing we do is pull the negative one off and then the number. Now we have taken stuff like this and we have done menu two, three using our calculator to factor it. So if I do menu two, three and I factor 40, it's going to be two to the third times five. So three twos and a five. I know this part when it comes down is gonna be I, but it's gonna have a pair of twos that's gonna be there. So two I square root of 10. Now this is gonna go in here. So X equals negative two plus or minus 2i square root of 10 over 2. Now the only thing I would say is if I look at these three values there, and I know the first one's negative, but they're all 2's. So if I divided every single one of those by 2, I can kind of reduce this. So this part right here is just going to be negative 1. This down here is just going to be 1. So basically, if there's a 1 in the bottom of the fraction, I can just drop it. But these are going to drop, and it's going to be i square root of 10. Okay, now not all of them have something to reduce, but you should be able to reduce it if you can. Now, I cannot put this in my calculator because it's got an i in it. So no way to separate and do plus minus kind of stuff in our calculator like on the last one. Okay, last piece is discriminant. So use the discriminant to determine the numbers and the kinds of solutions. So remember, if I'm doing discriminant, I'm only doing this part of the quadratic formula. If it's positive, I get two real solutions. If it's zero, I get one real solution. If it's negative, I get two complex. So our job is to figure out, in this case, <coughs> what that's going to be. So let me get rid of this here. So in this problem, A is 6, B is negative 7, and C is negative 20. So I'm going to plug this in. So negative 7, 6, and negative 20. And this gets just basically put in our calculator. So if I have negative seven squared minus four times six times negative 20, I end up with 529. Now it's not important that it's 529. What's important about it is that this is positive. So if it's a positive answer based on what we know, it has two real solutions. Okay, go back over your foldables, and this will be our focus for tomorrow.